Okay, this is sort of an impromptu video on uh, hooking up uh, CNC for PC C89 um, board to uh, a KB Electronics KBMG 212D with its signal isolator to drive a DC motor. This just happens to be a Baldor servo motor. It's uh, just a DC brush servo. Um, it's got two brush holders on it. I've tested this with a motor with four brush holders and it does not work. It doesn't provide the torque. This has two brushes like a typical DC motor would have and it does work. So the purpose of the C89 board is to take a 0 to 10 volt positive analog signal and with an input to also convert it its output to a plus minus 0 to 10 volt analog signal and that's required by many drives such as this one to reverse the motor so to in forward it's 0 to positive 10 volts and in reverse it's negative 0 to negative 10 volts and it re this drive requires that signal and there are other drives that require it to run the motor in reverse um, Acorn is only capable currently of putting out a positive 0 to 10 volt analog signal. Okay, um, so first let me go over uh, the wizard real quick. You'll see that output 4 is set for VFD enable and output 5 is set for VFD direction. So you want to set those up accordingly on your uh, Acorn's uh, wizard imp uh, outputs. And let's go over output 4. This is VFD enable. So all this does is there's a normally, I'm using the normally open contact and the normally and the common. So the, the common and the normally open. So when a spindle motor is called for, this relay closes whether it's in the uh, forward or reverse direction. And these wires just go around to here the common and enable of the, uh, the drive. Um, as an extra bit of protection, you will want to take the enable and run it through an e-stop contactor, a pair of contacts on the e-stop contactor. That way if there's a fault or you hit e-stop, the e-stop contactor will open and it will disable this drive. Okay, So the e-stop contactor is basically going in series with this uh, enable output. So it takes this, it takes uh, a call from Acorn to turn the, the uh, spindle, which is the enable, and the e-stop contactor has to be closed. So if, if uh, those conditions are not both met, the drive will not be enabled, okay? Now, this is the uh, VFD direction. Output 5 is VFD direction. And what we have here on the center terminal is 5 volts and on the normally follows purple wire you'll see it's going to uh, this this contact right here. And that is the DIR signal. See there? DIR signal. So when you call a forward command from Acorn, nothing is needed other than the enable. The enable will turn on and enable the drive and your analog output would come on and go through C89 analog output control signal, which you'll see here is ground and plus minus at 10 volts, is coming around to common and SIG on the signal isolator. All right, that's how this thing gets wired up. Pretty simple there. So back to this. So this goes to the VFD direction output on output 5. The common is 5 volts, and I'm using Acorn Power Supply 5 volts for this. So that's that. And then, of course, this right here, that's the analog input. Let's see if you can see that. Input control, ground, and analog. Okay. So ground is the black wire, analog is the red. And that comes all the way around here, and it goes to Acorn's V out and COM.
Okay, you'll see the red on V out and the black on COM. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, the C89 requires 5 volts. So this wire right here is just basically 5 volts coming from the Acorn power supply right here. Common and 5 volts. So I, I plug that in there and you can see the LEDs powered up. 5 volts is on the right and ground is on the left. I'm just robbing 5 volts to go to the uh, output 5 common on uh, the relay board. And then again, there's the normally open going around to the direction. All right, and then I'm, I've got a jumper from common here to the center terminal, which is ground. All right, pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about jumpers on this board. Set your jumpers exactly as you see them here. Um, this board was meant to do m multiple things. I call it a kitchen sink approach, which I really didn't like, but the board works. Um, but that uh, select jumper for... For what do they call it? Input drive. Okay, so when the jumpers when the jumpers are on the left, that's for analog input. It pays attention to this. When the jumpers on the right, that's for PWM. Uh, we're not we're not worried about PWM. So you're going to put the jumpers on the left here. These jumpers here. These are VFD mode jumpers, international and U.S. Uh, they go on the left. Okay, you'll see them over here. The pair on the left, and then these jumpers. Are not connected they're only a pair of pins these jumpers are not connected nor are these here so make sure you set that up accordingly okay all right so that pretty much uh, covers uh, hooking up this thing um, I, I kind of charted this out might be easier to see there's the layout of the board the four blocks again there's positive 5 volts comes in this is power of the board and then ground the bar needs ground, and then I have this jumper going over to ground here on the direction side. And then this one is normally open on relay 5. PWM is not used. This is the Acorn 0 to 10 volt positive and COM analog output that goes to Acorn. We're not using that one. And then here's the jumpers again, the left two jumpers here. No connection on these. And then the VFD jumpers are to the left. Okay. And then... Uh, I didn't, the only thing on the bottom here is ground and plus minus 10 volts. This goes over to the, uh, to the uh, SMG uh, signal isolator. Now, uh, it's reported that this board has signal isolation, so technically you don't need that. Let's talk about the jumpers on this thing. You want to set this on A90, and then you have to set the Current, your motor's used. I just left it at 7.5 volts. It's probably less than that. Um, let's see. Um, just follow the manual for the, for the KB Electronics uh, KBMG212D and the SIMG signal isolator. You will have to do some tuning with these pots for the motor. Um, let me get out of the screen. I'll show you this thing running. Okay, I'm going to go to MDI. Here's an M3S1000. Okay, and if you go over here, output 4 is enabled. That's how the drive is working. Now let's do an M4 to reverse it. There it reversed. Okay, then we'll do an M5. And there the output 4 opened, so it disabled the drive. Uh, you will have to tune... You have to adjust these pots for your motor, so uh, pay attention to that. I had to uh, play with the RCL and the FCL because until I turned them, I, st I started the motor at about 1,000 RPM and it was kind of pulsing, and I turned them, I think it was counterclockwise, until they stopped pulsing and I left them. And then I put it in reverse and did the same thing. I turned it until it stopped pulsing. Um, and then you will have to, to uh, tweak the, uh, the max pot. And what you want to do there is you just, that's the high speed of the motor. But most importantly, be careful. You have to watch your motor's terminal voltage. If you have a 90 volt motor, then you just put, put your meter on, on the lines before you hook it up to the motor. Command the full speed at, at Acorn. Obviously, make sure you set the spindle speed in Acorn's spindle setup. Then command a full speed. So you have 10 volts uh, coming out of... Uh, the C89, 
and then adjust that max pot so the voltage reading is 90 volts max, okay? You don't want to go over that because the motors may or may not be able to tolerate anything over their terminal voltage, so you need to know that information. But the manual is pretty good about uh, making, these, making these adjustments. There are a couple other jumpers underneath this board, um, so you want to take the time to uh, uh, read all of that and set this, set this thing up correctly and uh, should do a good job for you. Um, let's just do an M3S500. There's S500. And I'm having a hell of a time stalling it. I'm grabbing it by that black tape. I don't, I don't want you guys to be grabbing the shaft, but I just kind of want to show you the torque. Now, I had a four brush motor and I could grab that shaft and stop it. So four brush motors don't seem to work with the, the KBMG 212D. Um, the two brush, it's got two brush holders that seems to work. This thing happens to have an encoder on the end of it because it's a DC brush servo. All right, that's enough of that. I uh, hope this guy's, this gets you guys going. Um, if you have any questions, um, just leave a comment below, and I will try and uh, um, get back with you on it. Or hit me up on the Centroid Users Forums. That's the best place to get support for Centroid Acorn. And uh, that's really the best place to ask. Post a Post pictures of your build, the details, what kind of motor you've got, the label on it. Uh, of course, you can't see the label on this motor. There it is down there. Just could turn this thing off. M5. You'll see the terminal voltage on this motor is, nine, is 120 volts DC. So I'm not running it at its full potential, which is 4,000 RPM. I'm running at uh, 90 volts, so that that RPM is going to be significantly reduced. The closer you run the motor to its uh, terminal voltage, the, the RPM will, will uh, also follow. Okay, this one right there tells you right there, so 4.76 amps. So in this case, I, would, I should have dropped this jumper to 5 amps instead of 7.5 amps. So there was a lot of, uh, a lot of information on the, on, the, uh, on the motor label. So anyway, hit me up on the... Uh, Centroid Acorn Users Forum. Make sure you post pictures of your build, details of the build, pictures of a control cabinet. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people don't post pictures and they expect us to be mind readers. We cannot see what you see. So the more information you give us, the better suggestions we can make. And remember, they're just suggestions, things for you to think about and try and see if it ha helps uh, solve your problem. All right, that's it for this video. I'll talk to you guys soon.